Hello Internet and welcome to CodeBig. In this video, we will be looking at what is WebAssembly and how can you get started using WebAssembly. I hope I got you excited, so let's get started. Welcome back guys. So, without wasting any time, let's get started. On 5th December 2019, WebAssembly became the fourth language standard along with HTML, CSS and JavaScript to run natively in the browser. Ever since, there has been a lot of confusion around what is WebAssembly, what it can and can't do, and how to implement it. Before moving forward, I want to make one thing crystal clear. WebAssembly has not been designed to replace JavaScript, but to work alongside JavaScript. Now, you might be wondering, why did developers go through a lot of trouble making a language that would work alongside JavaScript? They did so to overcome the limitations in JavaScript. Let's look at those limitations that led to a creation of a new language. The first one is, JavaScript is not good for CPU intensive tasks. If you are a seasoned JavaScript developer, you would probably know that by now. The reason for this is, JavaScript is single threaded which means it has only one call stack and one memory heap. Most of you right now might be thinking, they fixed this issue when they introduced web workers, right? That's true, web workers were introduced to resolve this very issue. But I would like to point out that web workers are not JavaScript specific. They were part of the browser feature which can be accessed through JavaScript. So now you might be wondering, what's so bad in that? This leads to our second limitation, which is JavaScript is text-based and not binary-based, which means it takes a lot of bytes to download and hence the longer startup time. According to a survey by Google, 53% of the users leave the website if it does not load under 3 seconds. So, we cannot have web apps that takes a lot of time to load. If this is not bad enough, the third limitation states that JavaScript interpretation and just-in-time compilation consumes CPU and hence device battery. With the growth in mobile users and people accessing websites on their mobile devices, it's bad user experience if their device battery are drained often. Along with these limitations directly affecting our user experience, we have the last limitation that affects us, developers. The fourth limitation is we need to rewrite libraries, modules or apps written in another language to JavaScript so it can work on the web. With this, you have a pretty good understanding of the limitations of JavaScript. Before understanding how WebAssembly solves these limitations, let's understand the definition of WebAssembly. WebAssembly is a type of binary code that can be run in modern browsers it enables us to write code in multiple languages and run it at near native speed. WebAssembly, in short, is termed as VASM. Let's look at how WebAssembly tackles the limitation of JavaScript. WebAssembly is written in low-level languages like C, C++ or Rust, which means it does not take too much CPU time to compute and also there is no need to rewrite non-JavaScript libraries or modules into JavaScript. WebAssembly is in binary format, which means it requires fewer bytes to download and hence faster startup time. WebAssembly generates a binary file which is decoded and compiled to machine code on the web without the need for any further optimization, which means it is super fast and consumes less device battery. Now that you guys know how cool WebAssembly is, I want to talk about when to use it exactly. We know that modern JavaScript engines are very fast and highly optimize our JavaScript code. So, using WebAssembly for simple tasks will not improve the performance of your application. But you need to use them when you encounter CPU intensive tasks like image and video manipulation or complex business logic like in video games. 
The second place is where you need to rewrite old C or C++ modules into JavaScript. You might find it silly as to who might be planning on doing it. But big tech companies from the 20th century have most of their code base in C or C++ and it is a costlier operation for them to convert everything into JavaScript just so they can target their web audience. The third place is where we are creating various compilation targets as a single VASM compilation enables it to run on various processors. Now that you understood what is WebAssembly and why is it so advantageous, you want to know how to use it, right? The simplest way would be to write the code in C, C++ or Rust. The next step would be to compile and to generate VASM binary. The next would be to import the VASM module into JavaScript. Finally, you instantiate the VASM module and use the exported function. The steps are really simple and easy to follow. So in the next video, we will be implementing the same using React. If you want to follow along, consider subscribing. See you in the next video. Happy coding until then.